Jeremy Onwell. He's CEO of Edmunds.com, the authoritative website for auto industry data. He joins us from Santa Monica, California this morning. Uh, so, uh, Jeremy, how do you read this figure? 26% sounds like a big number, but uh, does it matter? How big is, is uh, April as a percentage of sales? Yeah, well, just uh, dealing with the percentage increase, we think that the industry is going to be up over last April about 20%. So GM's uh, tracking ahead of the industry pace. That's obviously good news. But it's a very complicated story for April. I think the, the headline number is going to be in the low 13 million, maybe 13 million three on an annualized basis. So that sounds pretty good. But when you look a little deeper, there's a lot of trouble swirling in the marketplace, not the least of which are some of these supply and production constraints that we're going to be facing later this summer. And you're talking there about uh, disruption issues because of the earthquake and tsunami in Japan? Yeah, there's a lot going on in the car industry. We've got gas prices that have been climbing and obviously mm -hmm. pushing consumers in a big way into the smaller vehicles, which are less profitable generally for the car companies. But then, as you mentioned, we had the earthquake and the tsunami, which is, has really uh, disrupted some of the production coming out of Japan. But it's been some of the effects have been rippling through the whole world. Right, not just an issue for Toyota itself. No. No. Although it looks like in the United States that uh, Ford and GM and, and, and probably Chrysler are going to be able at the end of the year to continue to produce the cars that they planned on. But the fact of the matter is that the industry was recovering faster than people expected this year. So we were going to be tight on supply anyway, and this is only going to make the situation that much worse. And I'm looking at the forecast that you shared with us. You are expecting automakers virtually across the board to hike the price of the autos they're selling. Yeah, what we saw, there's actually several things going on. One of them is that we've seen just inflation. So there's been some, some costs going up uh, from a commodity perspective, and some of the car companies have been raising sticker prices. In April, though, they started reducing incentives, really in anticipation of some of these tighter supplies, three to five, sometimes even $700, depending on the car company, where the amount that incentives went down this month. And then dealers are starting to raise their prices, too. Uh, dealer prices are up about $180. The point is that when you start to add all this up, and it's just started. We're going to really see, I think, the bulk of these price increases being felt May, June, July. That, you know, anytime you raise prices, you push down demand. And it's possible that we could be pushing down demand faster than we're put, than supply is actually being reduced, meaning that pricing is going to be the problem this summer, not supply. Are you saying that the, these spring figures for April could actually be the high point? Yeah, I think for the next few months, we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of headwinds pushing against any kind of uh, sales increases as we move into summer, no doubt. Well, the automakers then spin that. You know, Ford did it, GM does it. They say, oh, yeah, well, fuel's not as much of a problem because look at the demand. It's for smaller cars. People are now buying fuel-efficient vehicles. Is it that easy of a, of a trend? I mean, it doesn't seem that consumer logic is, hey, I've got less money to spend. Let me buy just a smaller car. Yeah. The big thing we're going to be seeing in April, and when you look at sales on a week-by-week -week basis, the sales have been trending down very strongly. So the beginning of April, we saw very, very strong sales, almost 15 million on an annualized basis the first couple of weeks of the month. And they have really deteriorated since then. And it's really, I think, because of these price increases. So moving into May, the sales pacing is already much lower than it was beginning of April. Now, as you say, there has been a shift. You know, a lot of consumers are now thinking about smaller cars, but they tend to be less profitable for the car companies. Mm -hmm. Overall, though, I think that when you think about Ford, GM, and Chrysler, the next four or five months could be very profitable for them because they're going to be able to sell pretty much every vehicle they can build, and they're going to be able to cut incentives at the same time, which will clearly uh, raise profits. So uh, what are you expecting to see uh, from Chrysler, from Toyota, from Ford when we hear? Well, we're seeing that the only car company that's actually sowing sales increases from, from last month, March, is going to be General Motors. And that's mm -hmm. a bit misleading. They had a re sales really uh, cratered for them in March. They had big incentives that ended in February, so their sales plummeted. Everyone else is showing volume sales down in April from March. But April's never that great of a month. We've got taxes and some other things that right. generally push down sales. So the headline number is going to look pretty good. You're going to see SAR numbers, you know, the adjusted sales rate numbers of over 13 million. But as I said, when you look a little deeper, it's not, it doesn't look quite so pleasant. Important context to put around it. Thank you very much, yeah. Jeremy. Anytime.